Good morning. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What a delight to be in the Lord's house uh, this morning as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Just one announcement. Uh, flowers that you purchased can be taken home after the 930 service. Uh, if you're going to be with us, totally different service, totally different sermon. So you're welcome to come back. Uh, please do and enjoy this wonderful Easter Sunday. Uh, the order of worship is printed for you. It's up on the screens. Our first hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. Blessings to all of you this day as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. stand together as we continue with our confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and Receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue as we sing responsibly the intro. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The Lord is my strength and my song. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Glory. 
You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. May be seated. The Old Testament reading for the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine and well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand together for the Alleluia verse in the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. Be seated for our next hymn, Christ Has Arisen, Alleluia.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our gospel reading ended today, and they went out and fled from the tomb. Fled, for trembling and astonishment had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Some people don't like this or don't care for this Easter gospel we hear, right? Doesn't seem to end right, does it? When the women saw the empty tomb, when they heard the message of the angels, right? They should have been happy. They should have been overjoyed. Filled with joy like us on Easter Sunday morning. Leaping, dancing perhaps, running around telling everyone, right? Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. But they didn't. They went out, fled from the tomb. Trembling and astonishment, said nothing because they were afraid. Seems kind of unrealistic a little bit. But when you think about it, that's it's exactly what death does to us. And it, it fills us with utter dread and fear and confusion. I mean, imagine today if you went out to the cemetery to the grave of a loved one and right, you found it dug up, casket torn open, the body missing. What? What would you think? What would you think if someone came up behind you and told you, oh, yeah, he's risen, he's not here? What would you do? I imagine the very same thing the women did. If you would go home in a mix of jumble of trembling and astonishment, confusion and pain, and probably some fear. Yet we learn from the other Gospels, right? The women eventually did tell the disciples and Peter, and they came and saw the empty tomb as well. And we know, as St. Paul told us, that the risen Jesus then appeared right to Peter, to the twelve, to more than 500 brothers at one time. And with that, slowly but surely, the stones were being rolled away. Not the stone that enclosed Jesus' tomb. That stone had been rolled away by the angel to show that Jesus had been risen. No, but the stones that covered their hearts were being rolled away. Right? The stones of unbelief, the stones of doubt, the stones of confusion, the stones of fear, the stones of uncertainty. Jesus comes to them that they may know, yes, he was dead, but he is now alive. Death could not hold him. Death is now defeated. Death is no longer the end. The power of that horrible, horrendous, life-stealing foe has been knocked back to hell. The great battle between life and death is done. And life has won. Now don't blame the women for not getting it right, right away. We don't either. And that's why we're so afraid of death, right? It still looks strong. It still looks powerful. And it takes people in the prime of their lives. It sometimes brutally takes people. It will at times come suddenly and unexpectedly. Death seems so wild and out of control. It seems so final. And, and looking around at our world, it seems like death not life, is winning. And that's exactly what Satan wants you to think. He wants you to think that he is winning. I mean, that's the spin that he puts on Easter, right? And, and, and you know all about spin, right? Politicians do it all the time, that no matter whether they were on a winning or a losing side of an argument or a vote, they... They always come out looking like they get what they wanted. It's the same thing Satan is doing or trying to do with Easter. Yeah, Jesus rose from the dead. He can't deny that fact, though he tries to get you to. But maybe even more, he tries to plant doubts in your heart and in your mind. Yeah, Jesus rose from the dead, but does it really matter? And does it really matter for you? Yeah, Jesus is risen, but 
But death continues on, right? Cemeteries are still full of people. Funeral homes are not going out of business anytime soon. And, and you're going to die too, so who really won? <laughs> Don't believe it. Jesus' resurrection, it's, it's the hole in that dike of death that is going to bring the whole thing crashing down. Crashing down on the last day when all the dead are raised in a great flood of victory and life. Satan won't be able to spin that day. The only spinning going on that day will be that Satan is finally flushed down the abyss once and for all. You see, Satan, his spin cannot stand against the word of God. This is exactly as Jesus said it would be. And not only in what he himself told his disciples, but what he spoke through the prophet Isaiah, we heard some 700 years earlier. He will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. 700 years earlier. God said that through the prophet Isaiah, right? On this mountain, on Mount Calvary, Jesus would swallow up death forever. That he would take away the reproach of his people, our sin and death. And the result? Be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him. And here it is, Satan, that he might save us. He didn't do it to save himself. But to save us, he took our sin to save us from our sins. He took our death to save us from death. Right? He took on you, Satan, to save us from, from you. And you know what the message of the angel means? Right, Satan? He's risen. He's not here. That means you have lost. And in Jesus, we have won. Spin it however you want, Satan, but it's the truth. And that flood of victory and life that will come crashing through on the last day, it has, in fact, already begun. For the flood of holy baptism keeps poking holes in that mighty dike. Every time a person is baptized, Satan, you lose. Another person is joined into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Another stone being rolled away. And this is what St. Paul says is of first importance for us. The most important thing to know, the most important cling, thing to cling to. That Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day. Hold fast to this word. This is the victory. This is our hope. Hold fast to this word when faced with death. And know that death is not the end of the story. Hold fast to this word when you're faced with your sins. And know that you are forgiven. Because the wages of your sins have been paid in full. Hold fast to this word when... Things seem to be falling apart and see here once again the start of a new creation. Hold fast to this word when Satan tries to convince you that, that, that you don't matter, that no matter what you do, Christ doesn't matter. Not because you were good enough, but because Christ loves you. He loves you. Hold fast to this word and don't be afraid see because of this day because of the resurrection because of the empty tomb there is now 
nothing to be afraid of. The monster of death has been slain and life reigns. That's faith. Hold fast to this word, the faith given to you by the Spirit. It's hard sometimes. It is. Just look again at the gospel reading. It was hard for the women that first Easter morning. It was. But the God who has made you his own, the God who sent his son for you, the God who raised him from death, the God who gave you his Spirit, the God who has proclaimed this word to you, will give you the faith that you need. We'll have our moments, just like the women, we will. We'll have our moments of trembling and astonishment, that's okay. The Lord will see you through those times as well, just as he did them. And that's part of his victory too, you know, to give you faith, to keep you in the faith, to give you the goal of your faith, to be with him, not dead, but alive in the life that has no end. This too is happening even now. Just as the flood of Jesus' victory is being poured out, so too is he with you now. And it's Isaiah who told us that as well. Right? On this mountain, right? Mount Calvary, remember? On this mountain, Jesus would not only swallow up death forever, the Lord of hosts will make for his people a feast. And not just any feast. No, this is the feast of all feasts. The best of feasts. Rich food. Well-aged wine. Rich food full of marrow of aged wine. Well refined. This heavenly feast is what awaits all of us who are in Christ. And yet just as the flood of Jesus' victory has begun... Though its fullness will be on the last day, so too his feast. For what richer food, what greater drink could there be than our own Lord's body and blood? What could be of more benefit to us here in this life? Say what five-star Michelin restaurants have nothing on this meal. If you hold fast to the word... And see here by faith what cannot be seen with the eyes. That here is the feast. The feast where we are joined by angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. That here is the body and blood of the Lord himself. Given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. To keep you. To preserve you. Steadfast. Unto everlasting life. So yes, trembling and astonishment have their day. But joy and life are yours forever because of this day. Because the grave is empty. Because the strife is over and the battle is done. Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. The peace of God, the peace that surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus, your Lord. Amen. Let us stand together now as we continue with the prayer of the church. We pray. Almighty and eternal God, we adore you as the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And with the whole church on earth and with the host of heaven, we ascribe to you honor and blessing, thanksgiving and praise. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. You created us in your own image and redeemed us with the precious blood of your Son. By your Spirit, you sanctified us and called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Grant that we may with thankful hearts receive these great mercies and express our gratitude, not only with our lips, but also in our lives, as we give ourselves to your service and walk before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Deliver us from sin and error, 
from the frailties of the flesh, the allurements of this present age, and the temptations of the devil. Give us faith that works in love, hope that never disappoints, kindness that never fails, confidence in you that never wavers, patience that does not grow weary, and courage always ready to confess Christ, that we may live in your mercy and die in your peace. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we gather our offerings to the Lord. Let us stand together and we continue with the preface as we prepare to come to the Lord's table this day. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, 
giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For Christ, our Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed. By his death he has redeemed us from the bondage of sin and death, and by his resurrection he has delivered us into new life in him. Grant us to keep the feast in sincerity and truth, faithfully eating his body given into death and drinking his life's blood poured out for our salvation until we pass through death to the promised land of eternal life. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and to give you peace. Amen. Amen. Maybe seated for our closing hymn, Joy to the World. 